Introduction. At its heart, Unity allows us to work with thousands of triangles. A triangle, as you know, is made up of three points, which we call vertices. Each vertex has a position in three directions. These directions are called X, Y and Z. We can think of the X direction as left and right, the Y direction as up and down, and the Z direction as forward and backward. By selecting a number for X, Y and Z, this will position a vertex in what we call world space. Before we can show this on your computer, tablet or phone screen, we need to project these vertices onto a 2D screen. Inside the three vertices, once we know their position on our screen, the triangle will need to be coloured. This could be by just filling all the pixels inside the triangle vertices with a simple colour, or it could require placing a part of a bitmap in the triangle, or it could involve calculating these colours by adjusting them based on the amount of light hitting them. So there are two stages to the process of rendering a triangle. First we need to position the vertices, then we need to paint the pixels inside the triangle. A unity shader comes in two parts that echo this process. There is a vertex shader, the job of which is to take the vertex in model coordinates and position this on our screen. The vertex shader is called for each vertex in a model and there is a fragment shader which is called for each pixel and the output of this is the colour in RGBA format for this pixel. The RGBA format has a value between 0 and 1 for the red channel, the green channel, the blue channel and the alpha channel. A value of 1111 would show a white pixel on the screen, while 1000.5 would show a semi-transparent red pixel on the screen. On a complex 3D screen, something in front of another item would overwrite the pixel colour calculated by another shader. Z buffering takes care of this, the Z buffer representing the distance from the camera calculated by a previous shader. The renderer takes care of this and we won't need to concern ourselves with such problems. All we need to be concerned about is what our current shader should do with the vertices of our model and how it should colour its pixels. Easy peasy! Hmm. Turns out it can have a few challenges along the way, but nothing you can't handle as long as you follow all the steps in this course. This video comes from my Unity Shader course. Get the full course for a great discount by following this link. See the description for a link to the resources.